Welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. Welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. So I just wanted to go into a little flow with the guides. Uh, a lot of Q&A stuff. So I kind of want to, I was planning on doing a Q&A, but then as soon as I started to ask the questions, I would get more that's coming in. So sometimes I realize it's just step out of the way and let the guides kind of share what's most relevant for this now moment for the collective. I will say there are a lot of topics I'd love to discuss. There's astrological things, there's earth changes. I keep getting messages about the body having things going on in it that we've never known about before. Um, New medical um, discoveries being made every day. the high rate of cancer that many people are facing and dis-ease, the political world and that heating up, not that it's really not been heating up this whole time in social and political and economic altogether. Um, The water, um, and I mean, it's just, it's infinite where we could go with these messages. So I think I'm just going to drop in and maybe um, see what's most relevant for the now moment and uh, maybe come back at a different time and do a little bit Q&A or maybe I'll do both um, with some of the questions that people have been asking me. <sighs> okay, so we'll just start with dropping in, see where this goes. Linearity is a path that many of us have been on for quite some time plan words, linear in time. And this has created an abundance of what we think we know, an abundance of architecture and formats of our reality, a plan and program that we can uh, add to our map ability that gives us a map that's easily traceable, that we can trace back to a particular beginning and potentially see how this would lead us to a particular ending. Yet here we are now in a particular reality that does not comply with that particular reality of a linearity and a particular timeline that only follows one path, only follows one program or template. So many of us have been templated, if you will, into this map into this mapping system with a particular idea about guides, guidance and our guidance system. Many of us have been using our own sonar and radar, we might call it, to see where it is that we would like to go. And we'll play with this for a moment. We've been using this old template or guidance structure to see from, or to give us the ability to see where we had the potential of going or where we thought we might be headed. And this is all a play on words for that particular structure that we have been isolated or uh, co-creating from or connected into is a template that is being, has been restructured. And so we are now programmable, we might say, and let us play with this for a moment, for we have always been programmable. Many of us have not recognized that we have been programmed or programmed ourselves to follow a particular program, template, structure, architecture, linear, timeline, and map. This has happened to us since our birth and potentially pre-programming before our birth, depending on how it is we came into this reality. And all versions, we might say, in this particular version on Earth are pre-programmable when it involves DNA, when it involves um, how our codes interact with one another and interact with our space that we exist within. We understand these words are actually coded as well, but we'll do our best to kind of share a linear perspective in this version of linearity. We have dropped the veil, one might say, um, 
And within this, I'm hearing, I dropped a bomb on, you dropped a bomb on me, baby. <laughs> Basically, it's this veil that we have all been safely concealed under is now gone from one perspective. Yet the distortions still linger for that which we have learned and programmed into our system is still here. And it hatches at times different objectives to continue to keep us in a linear subject, in a linear subjective patterning that allows for some of the old programming to still interface with what is already here and new and establishing our new point of view and for the perspective that we hold is key to expanding beyond and out of this linearity. So we would just venture to say that the concepts that we are grasping at or doing our best to understand tell a story about a program that is not necessarily what it is that we are seeking. It is a story that is seeking to program us. It is a story to keep us in a program of a lower frequency design that at one time was beautifully and harmonically interfaced with an idea or ideology of expansion and growth. And yet at some point, that program was um, mutated, we could say, or uh, potentially distorted. And these distortions began to grow and we grew within them. We grew inside of them. And this blocked some of the things from growing inside of us, but also encouraged other things to grow inside of us. And we could use so many different angles here to share what it is that we are speaking of. For we are blooming now, and with bloom comes an excretion in the body's chemical signature. And sometimes this creates what we feel is a distortion in our reality. But in reality, the true reality, the distortion has been us uh, not finding the ability to secrete these uh, particulates. Uh, some of the channels in which we were growing were blocked, we could say, or we believed in something that kept us from opening more to the bloom or the blossom that we were becoming. It kept us locked within a fabric or fibrosis, we could say, a, a tumor type of uh, energy where it fed on itself or fed on a distortion. And we've been um, eating from that for quite some time for our nutritional ideas of what we think or thought we needed to grow from. And I'm going to stop for a moment. So what I'm being shown, let's see what's going on here. What I'm being shown is a lot. We have a pro, no matter what we're, we come in with a program, our parents teach us certain things. We learn from our environment. We learn from our school. We learn from television, the radio. We're constantly drawing in information. And from that, we're creating an idea about how reality works. What we're told about where we come from about our uh, religions, political leaders, archaeology, science. It's all a story that was told to someone before us, told to someone before them. And then as we grow, more things change. We learn more and things open. But what I'm being shown was because we were in this program, it's almost like the Truman Show is what I'm being shown. And so we are being called to allow the stories to change so that they can better match what is true and let go of the need to um, hang on to a hierarchy or an, 
and a particular influential moment in our lives in which we feel attached to the outcome in when in fact that is no longer something that really influences our reality as much as we think that it has or should or will etc cetera, etc cetera. we are truly in a new reality and we cannot truly interact with this new reality in the most expansive of ways until we allow ourselves to get out of our own way to change the way in which we perceive our reality and our perception is based on what it was that we have been growing from and again i'm seeing like a petri dish right so that laboratory is the only thing that we've known and now all of a sudden the veil is dropped but we're not necessarily recognizing it we're not recognizing that anything is possible because of the limitations that we have had, we've been in before, the limitations that we've told ourselves before. We've told ourselves that's not possible, that's not real, that doesn't have logic behind it, there's no proof. And it's a fine line because yes, some people are lost in their imagination so fully that they're unable to also experience this new reality because that reality is something that doesn't necessarily exist yet. <laughs> Woo. It's kind of confusing, right? A little complicated, but I'm just being shown, don't worry about it. Be in the moment, stay in the heart, get out of the head and the answers will come. It will start to click into place as we allow ourselves to be in a flu more fluid state. This is a big message that's been coming up again and again. And they're also referencing un, uh, imbalances in the body. They're referencing energetic overlays. I'm seeing um, patterns that have been structured. Okay, let's see if I can draw this. Okay, for some of you, this is gonna be redundant. This is the body. We're gonna call this the blueprint. The blueprint looks like this. Then there's an overlay. And this looks like something else, we'll say. And in that overlay, so in here is like codes and shapes and colors and our ideas, our perception, our thoughts. But then as time went on, more of this came in from outside sources and built this like layer around us. And then this got distorted and then all of a sudden that started creating distortions in our biofield and then in our body we'll say and then it started to look like linus from you know charlie brown all that stuff gets in there and then before we know it it's blocking our own natural system from continuing to evolve and uh change that blueprint the blueprint is changeable, it's programmable. So we knew that, I'm getting goosebumps, coming into this reality, but we also agreed to have a, an experience where, you know, it's almost like this experience has created all these distortions. And what we're doing is we're clearing out those distortions now. And as we clear out those distortions, the root or the cyst that was created becomes visible and then that has to be dissolved so that the whole circ circulatory system can reopen back up and everything can get flowing and moving again so this is not only happening in the human body and our skin suit but it's also happening etherically and socially economically and politically so we're seeing all these energy cysts we're seeing all of these un these things coming up in the body that are ready to now be blown right open. That's kind of gross if we're talking about a cyst, but some of them have more issues than others. Some of them have more um, distortions than others. And this is also physical, mental, emotional. So it could be from what we're eating. It could be from what we're drinking. It could be from our thoughts, but all of that is part of the program. All of that is part of the reality. So, um, but, but what I'm being shown is a lot of it is a distortion here. It's, it's a disconnect 
from true source and now we're starting to open up all of these channels so that healing can occur so that um uh disclosure can occur and however there's also distortions about how we think that needs to happen when it needs to happen who needs to be the person to deliver the news uh who needs to be in charge these are all things that we think we know or we think we understand and some of us do some of us do understand that but what i'm being shown is but wait there's more there's always more at play than what we can really see um so being open to the fluidity of the natural process is what we're being encouraged to really do right now to alleviate and clear out all of the miscalculations. Um, this is challenging for a lot of people because I we all have programs in us running. We all have multiple programs running. We have ideas about things. We think we know because we went to this really expensive college and had a top-notch education and learned everything that our predecessors had to teach us. But now we're also being called to recognize that we are the predecessors of the next generation, but that next generation might actually know more than we do because they're already in the natural flow. This younger generation that's coming up, especially the little ones, are already in harmony. They don't have all of these distortions in their programming running yet. And because the veil has dropped, they won't. They're gonna see through it. It won't stick. That was sticky. We were in this very coagulated and, and lower density energetic field. And it's almost like I can see some of us excelling because we were up to the challenge, even though it doesn't feel like it. A lot of us got through that or are here now going, wow, that was really difficult. I learned so much. Other people said that was really difficult. I'm out of here. I'm over this. I'm moving on. Each of us is different based on what it, what it is that we are, we came in with what it is that we've attached ourselves to and attached our um, allowed to attach to us and so on and so forth. So what I'm being shown is our body is actually morphing. And in order for us to let that happen, the other stuff has got to go. The energy cysts, the, the we've just got to keep on keeping on. Cleansing, purifying, um, being aware. I mean, this sounds so mundane, but you guys, um, the messages that I keep getting are that we have more that we don't know about in our body. We have different organs that function in a different way than they ever have. We have, uh, our heart has fibers that were never there before. But as we grow, so too, and we evolve, so too does the, do diseases. So, part of what i'm being shown is we think that this evolution of these crazy viruses and things like that are bad but from another perspective that's a, also a representation of us growing and evolving so therefore the stuff that is it's a, like yin and yang right it's yin and yang yin and yang however you pronounce it it's that balance so the more balanced we are the less those things will stick and I just, I'm seeing miracles happening. I'm seeing people really, and also people that are choosing to move on. Um, and at the same time, all of this is changing all of our lives because it's affecting our relationships. It's affecting how we view medicine. I'm referring right now, maybe specifically to cancer and a lot of the things that we're seeing, I mean, it's it's pretty pre prevalent right now in my reality, at least. And it's affecting everyone in a different way. And I interact with everyone who has it in a different way. And it makes us question, well, do I have it? Is that something I need to do? I keep getting the cleanse card. 
every time I pull my cards, it's cleanse and purify. And I'm like, well, all right, I'm listening. And I am listening. And that's the question is, are we listening? Or are we trying to hang on to the old programs that have worked for us for so long? Um, I used to love my martinis, right? I could have a whole martini, maybe two and be fine. I had a great time. Not so much anymore. And also, I don't want to anymore because it makes me feel a certain way. It didn't feel that way back then because I was a different person back then. And so acknowledging that not trying to hang on to these patterns and habits that just don't fit anymore. They have no place in our new reality. And I'm using that as an example for me personally. I'm not saying that's your reality. Also recognizing that there are so I'll go back to this picture that I drew. That's one person and their reality. That's their program. Now the stuff that's coming in from all over is something that we're all, many of us might be exposed to simultaneously. You know, we're all exposed to the television, but that doesn't mean we're exposed to it in the same way because we're not watching the same shows, right? We're all exposed to, um, political realms, but we live in different countries. So that looks different for everyone. Uh, the things we're drawn to because of our pre-programming, I mean, never watch anything on the news about war, because that isn't something that I feel called to tune into. Other people, maybe they came in and they're, they've had lifetimes where they've been in battle. I have too, from my perspective. Um, but I've already cleared that interest. It's not something that interests me anymore, but other people might be interested in that because they're here to help those who are potentially unable to see Pat, unable to see the idea that we could have peace or how do we find peace in war? How can we clear that cyst and allow us to find a way to stabilize our reality so that war is not something that we think that is necessary. Does that make sense? So these are just things to kind of keep in mind. This doesn't mean that it won't affect many of us at in some way or another. It doesn't mean though, and it's not to say that I don't find it, it's just it's hard to explain. I'm not interested in um, I don't know, what somebody else is interested in. It's that simple. We all have different interests because we all have different things that we're here to learn, experience, and support. So what things now are we interested in? So recognizing that we're still programmable. So what programming are we gonna be tuning into? And I'm just hearing it's our own program. It's our own mapping system. Um, you guys, I have to laugh. Sorry, I just had to pause for a moment. I'm in the office. My door is closed. My husband's like knocking on the window. Can you hear me? I'm like, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> um, and I just want to go there for a moment because um, I'm going to go personal. Um, he was diagnosed with cancer and now we've gotten results back within the last 48 hours saying the cancer's gone. So um, this is a perfect example. And I'll just share briefly what we've been doing is uh, red light therapy, sauna. And by the way, this is not medical advice because sometimes you should not go in the sauna if you have cancer. So talk to your doctor. Um, my good friend, did biogeometry on him, uh, which is a form of energy work. Uh, it's much more complicated than the energy work that I know of. I would encourage people to look that up. Um, so that's something that we've been dealing with for a little a while now. Um, we both decided we could sleep for a week after that. Um, also, um, I'm trying to think what else we used. Well, I did energy work on him, of course, prayer. Um, and, um, hold on, I'm going to pause again. And, um, ivermectin. So, and cleanses, 
we did some cleanses, vitamins, all of that. Um, so I don't know a combination of all of that, but the doctor, we have another meeting this week to val- verify this, but the results we just got back this week said there is no sign of cancer. And as of the previous diagnosis, it was aggressive. So I certainly will say we're being called to that. And so just to share that, follow your doctor, do your due diligence, get multiple, multiple, go to multiple doctors. Don't just go to one. Um, I'll probably share this in a couple of other videos because not everybody will see this in this video. Maybe not everybody even made it this far in the video. Um, and do what you need to do to get the body cleansed, to get things cleared out. And also don't give up hope and also change your frequency. Come into a place of what do I wanna do to, to make my life the happiest that I can make it and the most joyful that I can make it. Um, so I just wanted to share that little personal big piece of information. Everything I just shared was what we did. I'm not saying that's the cure, and I'm not saying that that's something that is going to be good for you. So make sure that you talk to your doctor and again, multiple, get multiple um, people involved if you need to, to find out all of your options, if this is something that's affecting you. So big deal. Okay, I've got goosebumps. All right. So, um, let me just see where else we're going with this. Life is sustainable. It is something that we all choose how we want, we wish to interact with it. Life will sustain us and we must allow ourselves to give ourselves the sustenance of joy, of the blueprint uh, and schematic of bliss. When we have emotional turmoil, it isn't a negative, it isn't wrong, and it isn't something we should fall apart over in blame, shame, or judgment, self-doubt. Although many times these other emotions are attached to um, each other. We all have many attachments based on our childhood programming and our own thought patterns. We've, it, we have grief oftentimes that is unresolved. And until we come to that resolution, we cannot necessarily move on to the next chapter of our story, of our journey. And I'm hearing like the inner, it's like when the next, like when you're reading a program in church or when you're reading a program about a program, right? So I'm being guided to play with that. So I'm hearing the word play on program, like, all right, so let's play. Okay, so I'm not sure, this is really kind of fun. So obviously um, public notice, so I'm on Edim, Edim Online. Pro is, this is what I want to play with. Pro is fourth to, br- I'm, I'm seeing it as pro, like we're for it. And the one I hear Graham, I'm thinking of message and I'm thinking of weight. So we're carrying weight, right? Um, in the form of communication to our bodies or to the environment and from the, bo- the body of the environment that we are in. Now let's go a little deeper. Um, The general sense of a definite plan or scheme, method of operation or line of procedure prepared or announced beforehand. So for me, I see that as pre-programming, but we could say that, you know, we have a program that we follow. But what the guides are saying at the beginning of this message is we're programmable. And that's a plan where it's like able. We're able to do this in real time. It doesn't have to be preset, even though we have a preset diagram, our bodies, our DNA, but all of that is shifting. And so what we tell ourselves now 
in this moment of presence is actually the pre-program for the next stage of our life and awareness. Also, it, the sense of objects or events suggested by music, I think that is extremely valuable and, and pertinent for right now because the music is sound, it's vibration, it's frequency. Just like we hear water is programmable. Our bodies are 70% water. Our organs have water in them. What are we telling and listening to and repeating, right? Um, cause to be automatically regulated in a prescribed way. So we could play all of this arrange according to program there was something else in here oh the computer sense is a series of coded instructions which directs a computer in carrying out specific tasks and i thought that was relevant too because what's happening is that's shifting so how we're completing these tasks is also relevant because um i, I see this a lot in um yoga and pilates i will be working with someone who's had an injury their whole life. Let's say they had a back injury and they stand a particular way and they've done it for 40 years. And then all of a sudden they have surgery and that problem is corrected or they now are in a better place, but they continue to still follow that pattern. And it takes physical therapy to retrain the body in order to tell the body that you're safe now, you can stand on this leg. But not only that, you're retraining the body on how to do that. It isn't necessarily something that's automatic. It could be when we're young and babies, but not when we've been doing the same patterns. So this is just something to really recognize that in this new reality, everything is shiftable. And that is really challenging for those of us who were really, uh, you know, poured into a particular mold and really felt comfortable in that mold. That's a play of words. It's mold. It's time to move out of it and move on from one perspective or not, because that's our choice to or not to be present. <laughs> I'm going to just end on that note because I feel like that's a good place to kind of set this out um and then maybe i'll do a second follow-up video with maybe the astrological questions and i forgot where else i i started but i'll start off with the recap of this and then i'll go into the next video so thank you so much for tuning in oh i am being called briefly to say how can we reprogram ourselves and for those of you who've watched my videos for a long time that's pretty much what i talk about getting into the heart, breath work, maybe physical therapy, changing our diets, getting with a nutritionist. Um, for me, I always did things the hard way. I'd have to get really sick to then stop myself and take a look at what I've been doing versus what maybe I should be doing. Um, recognize if our tastes are changing around foods. Recognize if we feel repelled by certain programs or shows or foods or interests that no longer interest us. A lot of people have told me they've completely lost their taste for alcohol when it was a big part of their life. And just all of a sudden they just don't feel like drinking. That's a, that's a good example. Or I used to love red meat and now I don't want it at all or vice versa. Maybe somebody's craving it a lot. And that might be the body saying, the body needs protein, so figure out a way to make that happen. Um, I, oftentimes, if I'm working with a client, I'll see symbols. So I might work with someone and I see carrots. Well, then I have to figure out, is that because they have too much or not enough? Is that something that they need to eat? And usually when I look up what's in a carrot, that it's the nutrients that are in that is maybe what they need to add more of to their diet. Um, finding a more holistic approach to how we ha how we handle things and also reading up on some of the new discoveries um, is really helpful in increasing our bandwidth 
in increasing what we can and cannot accept. I get a lot of people now that say nothing surprises me anymore, which is kind of a good place to be because oftentimes we're living off of a fear-based program of our old, you know, think about TV and movies and the news, all of it. It's fear, fear, fear. So it's like surprise and we, and that creates this higher cortisol and it's, it creates stimulation and we get addicted to that particular type of stimulation. And then we don't know how to function when we're not being stimulated in that same way. But now all of a sudden we're not being called to watch those kinds of things. So where are we feeling called to tune into? And we might find that the stimulation comes from being out in mother nature. You know, maybe we decided to work with bees and that gives us excitement. Maybe we've decided to go on an incredible um, travel journey or go out into the wilderness or a dude ranch for a while and work with horses. Maybe horses, being around horses makes us feel a little uncomfortable, but we're called to do it. And that's our stimulation. I could go on and on and on. Each person has something like that happening usually in their lives right now. Um, and if it's not being felt, that that shift or, or momentum moving in a particular direction, it's usually due to stagnation from that not working through the sludge yet moving out those energy sits because again that that picture i drew earlier it creates like parasites they create a film that wraps around the body and like it's like excrement and it's yucky that you're not able to sense or feel because it's muffled so we've been in this muffled reality or blanket and inside of that blanket were codes and information is what it sounded like. And now all of a sudden, we might even be feeling overly stimulated. So we might need to do the opposite, which is hunker down and just sleep and rest and maybe explore some yin yoga or uh, grounding you know, be in water when that's happening. Water can be extremely therapeutic when our senses are just overly heightened. It can be therapeutic both ways. Maybe it, um, they have chambers that you can lay in um, and flotation tanks. Explore all of these things to then feel what does excite us in a positive way and meaningful way. It's not just about finding that next charge and looking for something to excite us. It's about naturally being drawn to something that um, excites us in the most positive way that makes us feel even more fulfilled and balanced. And we're not necessarily turning to outside sources to do that but they can enhance our experience and help bring us to a higher level of awareness or a feeling that maybe we haven't experienced before that makes us have an aha moment and uh, so on and so forth. So in love and light guys, I hope this was helpful for someone, namaste.